doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, or what kind of dog you have, or even if you have a dog, Flyball's the sport for you. Welcome back everyone, it's Alex for another Flyball and Friends video. Today we're going to be talking to someone from Hungary, so let's get right into it. Welcome to the channel, I'm so glad that you could take time out of your day to be here. If you could introduce yourself for everyone here today. Okay, hello everyone, my name is Esther Moravcik, I am from Budapest, Hungary and I am the member of the Akela Flyball team. Excellent. How many dogs do you have? I have two dogs. One, uh, she's a rescue dog, Lena. She's uh, almost five years old. And the border stuffy, Mono, and she's two and a half. Cool. And how long have you been playing Flyball for? I've been playing Flyball for four years now. That's fun. And what do you do for a living? I'm a physiotherapist. That's exciting. Do you do any of the stuff with the dogs? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So what got you playing fly ball? Um, actually, I was at the dog school with my first dog, Lena, and our team captain invited us to try fly ball uh, because he thought she would be a very good high dog because <laughs> she, she's really small and really fast uh, but she wasn't really into it so we have to finish fly ball after almost two years <laughs> but actually then i stayed with the team as a box loader and uh, and i think that's where the love began so that's awesome now is there a dog that you got to watch when you first started that just made you fall in love with the sport um actually i think it was more the atmosphere of the whole thing like uh working together try to achieve something together and we just started to uh, participate uh, at the tournaments so i was there with the team and it was i think it was a big help to them that there was a consistent box loader all the time so yeah i think it was the whole package that's just... awesome um is there anything you would recommend to someone starting out in flyball i think the most important thing that you have to look for a team where you can fit in well yeah and you can feel amongst friends and then you have to take it very seriously because the team is counting on you all the time so yeah so i think the most important thing that you should look for uh for more teams and go and watch how they train their dogs and all of their stuff and i think you're gonna feel that you're in the right place for sure and even if you don't have a dog you can just box load right and it'll help the team out drastically <laughs> yeah i think i think um uh, it was a bit weird that I, I didn't have a dog but i stayed with the team but yeah it was fun that's good it helps out lots there's lots of behind the scenes stuff you don't just need the dog you need the captain you need the coach you need you need lots of people to help out so it's good that you stuck around and helped out yeah i think it was much easier to train my dog after these years with the team as a box loader so yeah For sure. it was really helpful that's awesome. So at what age do you usually start your fly ball training for dogs? For example, my dog, I think my border stuffy was three months old when we start uh, the training, but it was, you know, just uh, catch the ball and mm -hmm. you know, just get it. So it was basically just, uh, um, just a ball work and then we started and then we continue with the rewarding system with the tuggies so a lot of play with the ball and the tuggies and I'm not sure but I think we started the jumping after eight months I think yeah okay and, uh, and the ball work as well maybe we, we started the ball work a bit sooner that's fair that's cool so lots of foundation stuff when they're puppies yeah. All right. So, how long does it usually take to train a flyball dog fully? I think it depends on the breed. Yeah. 
obviously training a whippet takes more time. <laughs> <laughs> I love whippets, but yeah, it's a fact. So, but most of the other breeds, like the border collies or the malinoas, it's it's quite easier. So, and my border stuff, it was very very easy to train as well. For sure. Now, how often do you guys practice over there? Actually, we we train twice a week. We got one shorter session during the weekdays and it's basically just um, improve our techniques, uh, practicing our drills and we have another one, a longer session on Sunday when we train in teams. So yeah, that's twice a week. Awesome. Now, do you do anything at home to help with fly ball? Um, we don't do fly ball at home, but we do a lot of other things like uh, we have two or three running sessions a week. It's uh, either treadmill or cutting cross based on the weather. And, uh, and we do physio every day except the training days, of course. Awesome. That's cool. Now, how often, how often would you go to tournaments? Um, it's a bit difficult because we, we have to travel a lot to compete and uh, I would say seven or eight times a year. Okay. Where do you mostly compete? Um, it's hard to say, but I think we got two tournaments in Hungary, two in Austria, a few in Czech Republic, and the EFC. Awesome, that's awesome. So you do a lot of traveling then? Yes, a lot. <laughs> What's the farthest you've been? I think it was the EFC in 2018 in Poland and it was about 1100 kilometers. Wow, so about 11 hour drive? Uh, it was 15 hours, I think, because obviously we uh, were with a my van and with our trailer. So oh, okay, yeah. Dogs with us, so yeah, it was a bit Fair longer. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so, do you guys have outdoor tournaments in your area then? Yeah, we mostly have outdoor tournaments. Do but you have I any indoor? No, not really. Um, so that was the. That was where I was really looking forward to the World Cup, but obviously it was cancelled. So. <laughs> For sure. Now, oh. what would be one of your favorite tournaments to go to? Mm, I think it's the EFC because we have, uh, you know, the opportunity to meet other teams. But we don't usually meet at yeah. the closer tournaments. So, yeah, I think, and it's a big thing, you know, it's a European Championship, so it's kind of a big thing for us. For sure. Uh, is there one thing that you like to take to a tournament that somebody else would consider weird? No, I, I don't think uh, I have a particular thing, but <laughs> uh, I have my little ceremony before racing. Uh, I think it's because I used to play uh, tennis and handball and I had to do my little ceremony all the time. So I think it's, uh, it's the same, only with my dog this time. <laughs> so yeah, we have our little ceremony. That's awesome, good for you guys. Now, what would be one of the most important things you learned when you first started playing fly ball? I think it was how important it is to be connected with your dog uh, all the time. I remember when Mono was a puppy and I was trying out different sounds to call her out from the box. And when I found the perfect one, it was like a new level of our work together. Or when I felt how should I reward her with the tuggy. Uh, so yeah, this, these tiny things are so important when, when you, you'd like to achieve something together. So yeah, that's when you really feel 
connected with your dog and i For think sure. that's, that's really important that's awesome now is there any place in the world that you would still love to go for flyball obviously i would see flyball in the u.s because there's a history there <laughs> and it would be awesome to talk to talk to people all the people maybe who play flyball for a long time but um uh, I had an opportunity to see the flyball in the UK and I absolutely loved it. So, yeah, maybe I will go there. But <laughs> I think I'm biased with them, so I try not to talk about them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. All right. Um, now, is there a dog out there that you enjoyed running over any of the other ones that you've been able to, whether it's yours or somebody else's? Um, actually, I just started to run uh, one of our teammates' dog, uh, Border Collie, and it's quite uh, quite an experience actually. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I actually really enjoy it. It's a bit hard because obviously it's not your dog, so you want to perform a bit better. But uh, but yeah, it's a it's a new adventure, so I really enjoy it. That's awesome. Now, what exactly do you like about playing fly ball? Um, I think what I really like is to achieve something as a team. After I stopped handball, uh, something was missing in my life. And that's the feeling what I was looking for, I think. And it, maybe it sounds weird, but somehow it feels better when you win as a team, not mm -hmm. as a individual individual person and obviously I love traveling with my team as well we have a lot of adventures together a lot of memories together and you just you just can't describe it to an outsider it's just a feeling and it, it's a lifestyle that's awesome all right now is there a team or person out there that you like racing against over anyone else there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I think we just like to be part of the best and the fastest teams in Europe. We had a lot of chances to race against amazing team teams uh, at the EFC or other bigger competitions. But I'm really looking forward to racing at the World Cup. For sure. Do you like starting or passing more? Actually, uh, I started uh, last year, the whole year. Yeah. But uh, I just started the passing this year. So, and my dog is faster when she's passing. So I think it's going to be our thing. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So, what would be one of your earliest memories of flyball? I think it was uh, our first competition uh, as a box loader. And I had a weird feeling after the whistle. I felt dizzy and my vision was blurry and, and so on. And that was the moment when, when I felt that it's really important for me. So, yeah. And actually, I feel that every single time since. So <laughs> That's awesome. Now, do you have another favorite memory of Flyball, whether it's on or off the racing lanes? On is when we won the fifth division at the EFC in 2018, and when we won the sixth division in 2019, and uh, off when we had the competition in Czech Republic in last May, and one of our car with our tra trailer and with all of our stuff in there, boxes, preps and stuff broke down somewhere in the middle of the road. <laughs> and we all stood there not knowing what to do now. And all the other Hungarian teams came to help us, saw the things and the people and the dogs out from the broken car after two days of racing. And yeah, it was, it was touching, I think. That's awesome. Good for the community come together. That's good. Yeah. Now, do you have any personal goals playing the sport? I think we'd like to break some records in Europe. <laughs> Hopefully we're going to make it. We'll see. 
<laughs> How close are you to breaking records? Um, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. That's good. All right. So do you look up to anyone in Flyball as a mentor, whether it was when you first started or continuing to this day? Uh, yeah. Joe Lamont. Uh, he completely changed the way that I think about fly ball. How I train my dog, how I see us as a team. And he's brilliant. He's very good with people too, not just with dogs. So, yeah. But don't tell him that he's cocky enough already, so. <laughs> Fair enough. That's good. All right. So outside of flyball, do you have any hobbies? It's hard because almost everything in my life is connected with flyball. That's fine. Or at least with my dogs. <laughs> so, but I have, I have really good friends. So I would say chilling with them is very important for me as well. But yeah, you could say running with my dog or Kenny Cross is my hobby, but obviously it's because of flyball, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, flyball keeps you busy. That's the way it is and it's it's a good sport to be in. So I'm glad that it keeps you busy. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, I think that's all the questions I have for you. The only thing left is if I could get you to challenge someone to do an interview with me. Do you have anyone in mind? Yeah, actually, I would like to challenge Josef Prager. Uh, from Love Enough Flyboard team from Czech Republic. I think it would be a really good interview to see how the things are in Czech Republic and there are a lot of good teams in there. So maybe it Excellent. Would be good. That's awesome. Thank you so much for nominating him. I will hopefully reach out to them real soon. Um, and it's great because I don't have anyone from over there on the channel yet. So it would be fantastic to get them on here. So thanks again so much for taking time out of your day to be here. It was great getting to meet you and hopefully we'll see each other on the racing lanes real soon. Bye. Thanks again for doing this. It was great to finally meet you and hopefully we'll see each other real soon. If you guys are new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell just to make sure you get a notification of all the newest videos that drop. If you guys could like this video, if you liked today's interview, and also comment down below anything you'd like. If you guys would like some more information on Flyball itself, there is tons of links in the description below. If you'd like some more information on her team, there is also a link in the description below. If you guys would also like to follow me on Instagram, we'll drop that down below just in case as well. And hopefully we'll see each other real soon. Until next time, guys, see you then.